Okay. Hello, we Internet ready. World. Welcome to the new <coughs> Dungeons & Dragons stream on my channel. Hello. It is the same stream, but it's a little bit different because things have been upgraded. Our cards are updated. The cards are, in fact, updated. Yes, to level 5. That actually happened Damn. last time. Um, so they were done. <laughs> uh, we now have an intro. I made an intro video. I actually sat down and actually made an intro video. Um, which is what I tortured you guys with for the last five minutes. Six minutes of stream. Um, and here we are. I was actually kind of hoping that would happen before I switched. But hey, it worked. So we are good. We are good. Um, in celebration... Oh, I should move that down in here. Uh, in celebration of the wonderful... Oh, shit. Sorry. Sorry. In celebration of the wonderful, wonderful holiday that is Halloween, we are dressed up. Because we couldn't do it last week, so we're doing it this week. Um, oh shit, you know what's missing? I forgot to insert a poppy. Hold on. Image. Where's Mara? Uh, she Alexa. is... She is, um, in transit at the moment. Ah. So she is not going to be able to join us tonight. So we are missing one Mara. Um... However, oh, that's not the right folder. Only one poppy. Damn it, where do I put this stuff? I apologize, guys. I for I forgot to add poppies to this to to D and D. What's up, big? We we are doing good. Um. I am naturally not on top of things, as usual. Um, it's fine. But hey, this is the new... We're used to it now. Yeah. But this is the new uh, D&D. What's up, D'Ange? What up? And D'Ange? Oh my goodness. The power couple. Uh, here it is. I feel like I need... Need cat ears? They're bat ears today, sir. Uh, that's gonna be a color key. Yeah, the closest thing I've got. And color. Okay. You wanna take a nap? <laughs> yes. I'm totally down for it. It's like I'm all lean back. I started that 30 minutes ago. A nap? Mm -hmm. Okay, now now we are emblazoned with the poppy of remembrance, so everything is is good. You came here to avoid the pole ticks? Yeah, I don't like ticks on poles either. They they bite. Why do you have a tick on your pole, Blue? Huh. Uh. I don't. They just bite. And it's not fun. <laughs> Denial is the first, uh, yeah, denial is the first step. should get that checked out. Although, okay, technically, technically, Melisandre doesn't want to sit on the Iron Throne, okay? Neither does John. <laughs> Neither of us want to sit on the throne. That's, that's the idea. Um, yeah, we are all here. There have been some upgrades. For example, the map is now hidden in 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 black rather than hidden in yellow so no gray. did it again wrong side what this head oh no i went down instead of forward so oh. i can't lean back like that it hurts my back ah uh, i'm, I'm uh, old lady yo old lady i'm old lady um, you really yeah. are. Well, Sandra really is, you know. So, um, yeah, literally. <laughs> fucking um, old, y'all. <laughs> she's fucking ancient. Um, anywho. So, uh, recap of last... Last time. Um... You guys traveled north to, uh, Fjordgard. And... 
past and and uh, then for past North uh, Fjordgard to Northgard, where um, Vicar participated in a drinking game with a wizened old dwarf who happened to be Lofgrimar Goldpowder, the very dwarf of which you were looking for. Yeah, I made some platinum off of him. Yeah, you you did. You beat him in in a uh, drinking game. Your uh, mouse is on top of my face, by the way. Oh, uh, let me move my mouse from your face. <laughs> my mouse. Just so, so you know. There we go. Now my mouse should be out of the way. Um. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh. You guys went to bed, uh, taking a long rest and alleviating one more point of exhaustion for those people who are still exhausted from the ride up. Uh, and the next day dawns bright, crisp, a very, very distinct chill in the air. And guys wake up in your rooms in the tavern uh i will tell you one moment because i have it right here um any any okay my tablet is restarting okay. did we pick the ice palace or the stone soup you guys the picked the ice palace in yeah, we're staying in the Ice Palace. Oh, at that, uh... With the, uh, gnomish proprietor, with his automatons running around, serving, and... Yeah, actually, automatons running around serving, which is really impressive, considering they're automatons, and they're serving everybody. Um, and yeah, so that's where you guys are. You guys wake up in your rooms. Um, well, I'm gonna take the chance, and while I go get some breakfast, I'm also gonna take my alchemy book. And I'm going to continue reading that. Okay. Um, at this point, I'd say you're about three quarters away through. You probably have another solid four hours of reading to finish your book. Yay. You still don't know anything. That's going to be the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you come down for breakfast... Lofgrimar is already up. He's sitting at the table. He's talking to a, a group of three dwarves, all who are very similarly garbed. Uh, excuse me, heavy cloaks. Uh, you know, stout caps. Um, like armored, very well armored, very heavily armored. Uh, they each have a shield, and all of their shields have the same symbol as on. Lofgrimar shield, which is a gold bar with part of it turning to dust. I cannot redeem push-ups right now. There will be no push-ups redemptions today. <laughs> or, or Just go in and disable it. Can I, can I temporarily disable that? Mm -hmm. ah. Yeah, but then you gotta remember to do push-ups next stream. Yeah, it's it's gonna be in the reward queue. It will be in the reward queue, and I will do it either after or on the next one. Um, yeah, that works. You said the symbol is on what again? The symbol is a gold bar turning to dust. It's on so a shield. That's located. So the, uh, it's on the shield. Uh, all of the armor it looks like very clean and well maintained. Cool. I'm on my last piece of paper, guys. 
Uh oh. That's no good. Don't worry, I have many of these notebooks, so. Yep. It's not like we can't get a whole bunch more. <clears throat> mm. Anywhere. Mm. Sorry. I know not of what you speak there, Blue. Um, you talking about online? No, I was referring to Costco. He loves Costco. Fucking Costco. Obsession. What would happen him do to see with no Costco? That'd be a sad world. He would order online. From I... Costco.com. Mm -hmm. Now have a Maybe Costco membership Costco because of him. Buying a couch from there. And you've been saving on your gasoline thanks to the Costco. Thank you. Mm. And I have their cart, so I get 4% cash back on gas. I have a free gift card right now, so I'm uh, using that. I yeah, went to the Costco. It me uh, weeks to the fill up. Me either. I don't even know what a Costco really is. Never been there. It's like a Sam's Club. Imagine Sam's Club. But a million times better. Yes, higher quality. Million is a quality. hard bar to uh, cross. I only go to Sam's Club when I want to buy water. Sam's Club is not bad, but oh, Costco is oh. just like higher quality stuff. I don't need like, to buy stuff in bulk. I yeah. Buy water in bulk. That's all I buy in bulk is water. And ginger beer. I just, I bought my monitors from Costco. Anyways, where were we at? I forgot. We are waking up. Sorry, we got sidetracked so on gold the greatest that was guys. Awesome. Are these all in the tavern? A bunch of them? Yep. Okay. So, I'll go downstairs to breakfast as well. <laughs> Keep Casual. Oh, door. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to get food and take it out to flank. Okay. Uh, as you go out to flank, you notice that your wagon is already hitched up and another wagon is next to it. Um, yours is hitched up with your guys' horses. The wagon next to yours is hitched up to... Um, snowy owl bears. Which, um, a normal hour there is that purple blue color. These look like polar bears mixed with owl bears. They're they're pure white, much bigger, and there's just a pair of them. Can anybody on said wagon, or is it just there's, wagons with polar bears? There is a two. There's two dwarves sitting on the wagon. What y'all doing? Ah, hello. Uh, getting ready to head out. Uh, my lord king said uh, you wanted to head out pretty early. And plus, it's best we, we get going as soon as possible. The weather's looking like it's going to turn on us. Rather not be uh, out of the caves, out of the tunnels when, uh, when, the, when, the, snow, when the storms come. I can't talk today. How far a ride is it? Uh, about eight hours. We'll take the full day's travel. Okay. Can I check to see if they're genuine? Sure, roll an insight check. Seventeen. As far as you can tell, yeah. They appear to be very honest. They... Roll a perception real quick. Natural twenty. So, on the side of the wagon, it's a little weather-worn, but it's... and it's a covered wagon, but you notice on the side, in the, in the covered portion, on the leather, and also kind of on the wood, and also you... One of the dwarves turns just a little bit and you catch his uh, shield. You notice that same gold bar turning to dust symbol. 
So the same logos on shield and the wagon. Mm -hmm. Where's the old kingster at? As you say that, he, uh, Lofgrimar pushes up in the door and says, Ah, my boy, sorry you come down. Impressive work last night. Today you're gonna, we're gonna be earning our keep, eh? You're gonna definitely be earning those platinum. We've got a hole fairly quickly up into the, into the mountains. I'm, I'm being told that, uh, that storms are coming, and we'd best be beating them, especially, especially the first storm of the year. What's the weather like outside right now? Before said storms. It looks really clear. There is not a cloud to be seen in the sky, and it is crisp. And there's definitely like a very chill, like there's there's definitely a chill in the air, but it's like that very crisp calm slightly chilly morning there's a little bit of frost on the ground okay, but no actual snow on the ground yet there's no actual snow on the ground yet. okay how hard is the travel going to be uh, so as i talk to the king yeah so long as we beat the beat the storm shouldn't be too strenuous. We'll have to make good time in the beginning. We should be able to ease off as long as we make good time. Anything we need to be worried about on the path? Mostly avalanches. With the... You don't have problems with creatures up here? Every once in a while, the occasional yeti will come down this way, but... Typically, the patrols from the city and, uh... And ice meat are plenty enough to handle all of the all of the creatures. Okay. It's north of the it's north of the mountains. You want to be more worried. Much more dangerous up there. Yeah, I'm not very used to this colder weather type place. It can be a little bit of of uh adjustment uh speaking of and he goes over to the wagon his wagon and he opens the back and he hands you a set of cold leather gear best be rounding up your friends i've got uh i've got a set for everybody all right so i'll, I'll get it real quick so i run inside and i yell at everybody Get y'all food and let's go. But I'm tired. Yeah, coming. <laughs> he's saying a storm's coming. We gotta go now if we wanna make it. And he's got gifts for you if you want a gift. I like gifts. I will take gifts. What kind of gift? So. A fancy gift. You really think a bar barbarian needs uh, fancy? What's her definition I of fancy? I offer something better. What is this? Sit back a little bit. <laughs> Just get on out here, guys. All right, so you guys all file out. Yes. All right. In turn, he hands as you guys come out, he hands you guys um, a set of cold weather gear, so you can add that to your inventories. What is it? Cold weather clothing. I think is what it is. Yeah. Um, beyond. Side. Yeah. The side. Okay. Which side? Either one. Something along those lines. Gonna show him Clothing, there. comma, cold weather. Yes. Perfecto. Oh, I got me some fancy goggles now. Yep. Ah. It's uh, it's basically, if I'm not mistaken, it's like a face covering, goggles, 
a thick cloak, uh, thicker pants, and shirt. It's very much more insulated. Uh, I believe it also should come with a pair of gloves, too. Yeah, gloves and a fur-lined hat. Mm -hmm. And it gives the us... Goggles. Uh, the goggles is what I'm really excited about. Gives us um, success on saving throws against the effects of extreme cold, too. Yes. So how do you how do you like don it? I mean, it's just is like a known thing. Yes. That it's on. Okay. So yeah, we're all wearing. Think, yeah, I don't think. I mean, you can you can opt to put it on now. You can wait. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put my goggles on now. Okay. That's all I want to put on. Okay. Just your goggles. Just my goggles. They're gonna be a permanent part of my wardrobe from now on. Yeah. So I'm gonna okay. have just some goggles. They're like the, old, the circular ones. The very steampunk goggles. Yeah, permanent nice. part of my attire. I'm glad I am proficient in traveling in the mountains. Hold on. Did you just add that in there? I added the uh, clothes in. Oh. The cold weather clothes, but that's been uh, my... Uh, uh, also, for your natural 20, I do have something for you. Uh, the car. Find you. Again. Okay. Find you. It's like a sliding. Okay. Alright. So we're all outside at the wagon. Yeah, the blue city's got something for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm just typing it. Yeah. I'm on drugs that make me sleepy. Hey, you slept all day. Confirmed. She said she's on drugs. We slept for like three hours today. Three hours? In the middle of the day. I also slept for about that amount of time. During the night, though? No, today. I went and voted and then went home and took a nap. Okay. It's more like I four. Two hours to vote. Huh? I waited two minutes. Yeah, it Same. was like two hours for me from when I left my house to when I got back. I walked in. I got to the Huh? I walked in, grabbed my pen and my thing, and did my stuff, and then I handed it to the. Uh, I tried to hand it to the lady, but then she pointed me at a machine, and I stuck it in the machine. And the machine went. Yep. And then it was gone forever. Yeah. Had I gone to the right polling place uh, first go, I would have been in and out in like 15 minutes, but uh, because I stood in line at the wrong place for about 15 minutes, it took me about, I don't know, 45. Yeah. 30 or 45. We put it on Friday. Oh, okay. I had a solid what, hour and a half, hour and 15 minute wait to get to the front of the line. There no was way. a guy that was behind me, was at the wrong precinct. So he had to go to a different polling location. That sucks. Yeah, I, I yeah. forgot. And by forgot, I mean I was too lazy to do my early thing, and then I ended up getting screwed. I really needed that sorted. I just didn't want to deal with people today, so. Yeah. Some, it wasn't states, bad. Are, some states are now mailing ballots, so you no longer have to go in. You just fill out your ballot, and you can turn it into the post office or the polling place. Yeah. And that's just like, you just get mailed your ballot. You don't have to, like, you can just fill it out and then just drop it off. You're done. And so you don't have to stand in line because it takes zero seconds to drop it off. I think you have to, like, sign up for that, though. Uh, like, not, yeah, some states are doing it automatically. Like, I think it's it, Washington, it Oregon, D.C., and parts world. of Maryland. You had to request that at, um, yeah, here. Yeah. Like, they, they mail you an application for a mail-in ballot. Mm-hmm. 
and voted in person and clicked my buttons on the screen and well, American flag popped up and I was done. You got a screen? Yeah, we yeah, got I had a pen. pen. Be like, okay, fill in the I box. I had a Scantron. Completely. Oh, it was, it was like, like oh, Scantrons. Yeah, we yeah. always have electronic screens. I was like, Jesus. I think, I think a lot of the early polling places had the electronic screens, but I think the ones, like, I don't know, about today, because, like, I saw one electronic screen, and I think it was probably for some sort of handicap. Situation. Yeah, disabilities, yeah. Yeah, disability, sorry. That's what I was trying to get to, but not the first thing that yes. popped in my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, All right. Um, yeah, so you guys are, you guys all now have your own set of cold weather clothing. Um, Olaf Kramar also pointedly says, like, don't, don't trust the weather can turn in an instant. So, while the going's good, we'd, uh, best get going. And he hops up on his wagon. Again, two ginormous polar bear owlbears. There. Does he start singing, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to work we go? No, but the three dwarves from inside join, and they climb into the wagon, and they start off. Okay. We are right. walking behind them. Uh, welcome to walk. You also still have your wagon with you, but several of you guys can. Oh. Oh, okay. we'll hang out in the wagon. I'll walk. I'm gonna I'll ride. Walk. Wagon for me, please. As long as two of you are walking in, and there's ample. Just gotta do some good calculations. About two hours into your walk, the skies suddenly get a lot darker. A couple hours after that, and the first flakes start falling. It's approximately 10, 11. It's not quite noon yet. And he was not wrong. Um, you guys are making very good time. So a natural time. So you guys are making very good time as um, you are following Lafgrimar. It's definitely making sure you guys are able to come along. Um, yeah, who is driving the wagon? Or no, I can drive the wagon. Are leading slash driving the wagon. I will. Both of you roll a uh, perception. Fifteen. Uh, twenty-five. Okay. Um, as you're driving your wagon, you notice a figure. Uh. Lopping, loping alongside you guys. It appears to be a fox who um, jumps up onto the wagon, Lofgrimmar's wagon, and disappears inside. A couple moments later, the fox leaps back off the wagon. Uh, Lofgrimmar then turns back to you guys and says, we best start moving, guys. Uh, I was planning on a more leisurely second half, but I think we should keep up the pace. Why is that? The storm's about to get a whole lot worse. What's up with that weird fox that jumped in your thing? That was actually a druid. What'd he say? 
told me that the weather is worsening. There's a big storm coming from offshore. Hmm. You want to stay and help us? He's going to make sure the various troll groups manage to make it somewhere safe. He's warning everybody he can find. Hmm. Must be getting real bad. Yes. We will hopefully make it in time. But we are going to want to push a little bit faster. Okay. Sounds good to me. I'm going to whip the horses real hard to make it go faster. Okay. So, I'm going to put on my winter gear. Um, for whoever is walking, roll an endurance. Check. And for those of you right uh, for those of you in the wagon, um the of you leading, roll an endurance for the horses. Which just roll a D twenty and tell me what you get and I will Oh okay. I was like, I don't see a modifier for that. Fifteen. Okay. Endurance? Yep. Endurance check if you are walking. And the two people leading an endurance check for the... What is that under? He said just roll a d20. Yeah, just roll a d20. No, endurance. Endurance would be constitution. I just keep calling it endurance. Oh. So we add our modifier? Yes. Or no? For, Never mind, then I got 16. If you're walking, add your modifier. If you're rolling for the horses, just tell me the number. I got 11. Okay. For walking. Okay. I got an eight. For the horse? Yeah. No, I have that fifteen for the horse. Okay. Um I need more screens. Seriously. Sorry, I have shitty constitution. I know I'm a glass cannon sometimes with horrible aim. One moment. Puppy went. I found the puppy. Okay. So the horses thankfully just make the save. And you guys are able to continue your journey at a little bit of a faster pace, which allows you to reach. It takes you a little bit longer, but you do in fact reach the. Um, you do reach a. Um, like, there's a series of twists and turns. Chewy, roll a survival check. Whoa! Woo. Cool. That was... that was close. 25! Okay. Um, you are able to... more or less remember the twists and turns you guys take as all of a sudden you guys are dumped out into a valley. You guys seem to have past the storm front as while it is still like the cloud clouds are still covering everything uh snow has not yet like as you traveled like you it was kind of getting snowy and kind of getting heavier and kind of getting heavier as soon as you dropped into the valley there wasn't any snow falling yet and yet yet and actually chewy you had advantage on that because it involves mountains but I, I think that's a good roll. Okay. Um, so yeah, you're, you can find your way back. Um, if need be. And you guys are... are faced with a valley that seems empty when all of a sudden a mountain face splits open in front of you. And the doors open wide enough for a house. 
kind of dwarf crap is this? <laughs> ah, it's a huge door. Usually, use I can to keep see it. that. Well, you know, in case we have to bring equipment in or out, I have to make sure the front door is big enough for everything. Yeah, it's um, probably big enough. I got you. Uh, as you guys enter, it is beautifully lit uh, with different colored fires lighting up different uh, columns where you see all this intricate stonework and reliefs. Um, different uh, dwarves in different poses fighting different monsters all across the walls, the columns, the archways. Just a very, very intricate entrance. The floor you're walking on is this. Uh, it, it's essentially white marble with uh, gray veins running through it. And the occasional flash of pink or uh, blue green. Fancy place you got here. Yeah, what do they call this place? Ah, welcome, my friend. To ice meat. Ice meat? Ice meat. Ancestral home of the Gold Powder Clan. Now the home of. The Gold Powder Clan and a few other folks. Speaking of, and uh, as he says this, you guys notice a, uh, a group of dwarves coming in, led by a very... Almost none of you have seen a female dwarf before, but this is most definitely not a male dwarf. Does she have a beard? She does not have a beard. Damn. Uh, she appears very matronly. And she comes forth and looks at Lofkramar. Husband, about time you arrived home. I was wondering when you'd be done gallivanting around the countryside. Winter's coming, you know. And he, for the first time, you noticed, is taken kind of he, he seems un, uh, a little off balance. He goes, Ah, uh, sorry, wife. I take it the clan's ready for the winter? I Take care of your friends and we'll talk. And, and she turns to walk away and he shouts after her, Hey, where's the lass? And she goes, she just looks over her shoulder and goes, Where do you think? And keeps going. So that was the queen? Aye, that's the queen. Queen Hygeia. Uh, I'll formally introduce you guys after we take care of business. Um, he snaps his fingers, dwarves come to attention, they help you guys out of your wagon, there's clearly like stables and a setup uh, for where the wagon is is going to be kept and stuff like that and both wagons are led away along with the horses and the uh owl bears and he leads you guys further into the tunnels and as you're going the stonework is continues to be just as intricate and and well worked uh almost as if a tapestry had been carved into the stone Um, after a fairly solid walk at this point, probably about 30 minutes, you guys reached, uh, you guys reach a huge door flanked on both sides by statues of Moradin, a, uh, dwarven god. Uh, at the door is a, is a veiled dwarf. Who, uh, the veil is is just thick enough to uh, obscure his features or her features, their features, and but thin enough that they can see through. Um, the king bows 
this dwarf, and they have a quick conversation. And you guys are ushered in behind the uh, behind the king. And so you guys go in, the door's open, you guys go in, the door is shut behind you, and you are now standing in... So all through the tunnel so far, you had been hearing normal, just background noise of dwarves talking to each other, uh, going around, some were singing, a lot of them were working, you could hear the forges. In this room... It is silent to the point where the noise or the the silence is actually loud. The while everything outside had been very brightly lit, or you know, in between bright and dim, it is very dimly lit in here, as only the lights near where you stand are lit. What's in there? Welcome to the Halls of the Dead. Halls of the Dead. Uh, as you guys... Uh, as he said this, he turns and leads you guys deeper in. And as he walks, lights flare in that same very dim uh, brightness. So it's very, very dim. But they flare to light as he walks forward. Why are we here? What are we doing? Yeah, what are we doing here? You wanted to see Lofgrimmar, didn't you? Or you wanted to see, uh... You wanted to see Finn Thier, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Right. Uh, it's another bit of a walk couple twists and turns. The lights behind you dim and fade out. Lights in front of you flicker to life as you walk by. Some fancy magical lights right there. Fancy magical motion detection lights, yeah. Um, the, the alcoves you notice here and the stonework here, while outside it was almost like a, it was like a tapestry carved into stone here. It is the reliefs of dwarves. Every once in a while, there are runes at the either the foot or on the dwarf, uh, like on some part of the dwarf's armor. Uh, there's different um, podiums with dwarf statues, and they obviously have uh, runes all around them. And you guys finally make it to a alcove that is just wide enough for one person to push through at a time. And as it opens up, what you see? The paper! No, um... Dun 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 dun! You guys come into this, it's almost like a clearing, where, um, these are actually up on the stair line. Um, this section is at least 15 feet taller than the surrounding rock. Um... It's it's a uh, very interestingly carved, very different from normal. Um, you guys can just see beyond this. You can see that there's this triangular uh, gnomon 
of uh, crystal. So. Looks like the moons. So this right here, this line, is actually a very tall triangular gnomon uh, made of crystal. It's like a sundial? It kind of? Kind of looks like that, yes. Um, a... This is very weird, but, but as soon as you came into this room, Every, uh, behind these pillars there are, uh, there are what looks to be evergreen trees that are actually growing. And th these circles here are actually pale blue crystal, uh, pillars. Not so dead for a hollow dead. Ah, dwarven magic. Not the normal, not the normal, uh... What's the significance of all this stuff? This is, uh, Lofgrimmar's tomb. Finithir. This is Finithir's tomb. I wanted to give him something a little bit more deserving of the work he had done. And, uh, ah! Well, I can introduce you to somebody else in my family. And you guys now see a figure running down the stairs towards you guys who just barrels right into Lofkramar. And goes, ah, lass. Uh, this your kiddo? Yes. This is Hilda. The firstborn. Hello. Uh, you see in front of you a young dwarven lass of probably about 18 or 19 in dwarven years, which, since dwarves have extended lives, I'd probably be like 10, approximately. Translating to human years. Um, I'm gonna bow to her and say, "Pleasure to meet you, milady." She giggles, and and then straightens herself out and bows, at, bows and then pauses, and then does like a half curtsy back to you. Lofgrimar starts chuckling, very quietly. <laughs> So is it normal for your daughter to hang out in the Hall of the Dead? Well, just to see Finthir. She's heard a lot of stories about him. It's been a, a nighttime story from, from the first day. Ah, uh, go to your mother. We'll be, we'll be out for dinner soon. Uh, so but... where... Where is he buried within this, uh, tomb? Oh, that's the best part. Um... He... walks up... Deus, and he looks... at the, uh... The word just fell out of my head. Why is hate it when that happens. I know. It was... The Gnomon looks at the triangular Gnomon and says, we should have an answer. And right as he says that, a shaft of moonlight falls upon it and casts a shadow, uh, revealing the current phase of the moon, although there's... Roll, actually, roll an investigation check real quick. Or a perception. Everybody? Mm -hmm. Is it perception? Perception. I got a nat 20. 17. 
I got a whopping seven. I got a nine. Fifteen. Do you want me to add my... Um, no, hold on. You're getting stuff and then I'll tell everybody else what they found out. Secret notes. Yep, secrets. Uh, I like secrets. Secrets, secrets are no fun. Secrets, secrets hurt someone. I like secrets. Usually when Blue tells me things, I don't share them with you. Wow. I don't. Mysteries of Moxie. Continued. I'm tired. I need another monster. Me too. I'm like Loki dying. Sure. Indeed. I haven't eaten. Whoops. Hey, do you have the uh, portable charger somewhere? This iPad's about to die. Uh, yes. Okay. So, um, did you guys Wait. notice? Like, there's. The shaft of moonlight lights up the room pretty well, but you guys don't, you can't really tell how it's getting in. Because there's no, like, hole in the ceiling, it's, like, pitch black, except for this ray of moonlight. Where's the moon coming from, man? Dwarven magic. With a little bit of elf magic, actually. That one's not all dwarves. Got some... Got some help making it nice. So why such a... Got some friends in lunar places. Something like that. Why such an extravagant burial site for somebody? Because of what, uh, what Finithir did. He was granted a great boon by, uh, um, by the Queen of the Moon herself, uh, Saloon, the, the goddess Saloon. Actually, half of this was her plan, so we just followed the, uh, we put our own flair to it, but Interesting. Y'all's getting like Avatar The Last Airbender vibes here. Uh, so, alright, so you guys, I don't know where you guys want to be, but you guys want to be. I want to be next to Gold Powder. I'll be behind Picar. You think gold powder up the stairs? Gold powder is actually right up here.
Oh my lord. Okay. Ugh. Um. So, the beam of light casts a shadow, which shows the current moon phase. Uh, sorry, I forgot one thing. So Lothkamar is standing here, and shadows cast the current moon phase, and then all of a sudden you hear a rumble, and a wall, the wall that was sitting right back here, actually lowers down, and you guys see You guys can actually see beyond it. As you see, you guys are 15 feet above the moon dial, which is now fi which is 15 feet above this lower section. So it's like a stair step down. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Those are some big ass stair steps. Yeah. What uh? What are these on the ground? These buttons along the ground? Uh, Lofkramar turns to you, surprise. Eyebrows raising us. Ah, you noticed those. That's the... Of course. Uh, that's the secret to opening this particular... Uh, this particular tomb. Not all tombs are made the same, but this was our flair to the plans. Something to allow Dwarven access in a pinch. Uh, follow me. <laughs> and goes around to the side, where as he walks this way, it turns into a staircase down. Like it just, like, as he walks, it just turns into a staircase. And you notice it's almost like it was an illusion, except you could see the stairs going down. And it seemed to break right when you got on it. And it makes it across the dial. Okay. You guys follow him? No. Follow him. Sure. Okay, so you guys follow him. And he comes over to this door, or this wall, sorry. And he just pushes on the wall, and it slides open. He walks in. Obviously, this is a little bit of a shortcut. Not the actual puzzle. To Can't make that easy. However, being the king does have its benefits. Um. So, can you tell us what he did to warrant this? I mean, this is extravagant. It is indeed. Like I said, he was the blessed of Saloon. He... His work, what he did to end Tower Wars, what he did in his other work, what actually all of us did, contributed. Um, he became noticed by Saloon, Raven and Saloon insisted, actually they both really insisted, uh, Saloon made the Raven Queen. First time I've seen two gods talk, mind you, but uh, she made the Raven Queen agree to take good care of 
uh, good care of him. And we made this too. But more importantly, and he turns on you guys and swishes his cloak around. This is the final resting place of Finthir. Finithir. And he walks over here. And he's now just standing here. Good. This is the final resting place of Finthir Arlon, Clan Goldpowder, the Northern Mountain Realm. And stand in the secret stronghold of the Order of the Acorn. Um, I am also Finithir, Great Oak Order. And as he says this, two hallways. And door like stone slabs slide down. He takes you guy. He walks the one on the right, and actually no, sorry, he walks the one on the left, and steps down the passageway. So he's finna there. I'm guessing he's also the Dread pri Pirate Roberts. That is what he just said. He's headed into this this room there. I'm assuming you guys are still following him? Yeah. Okay. Of course we are. Okay. So, you see in this room, this right here, that line, is a statue of an elf. Um holding a bow, uh, ready in one arm, and a book in another. And the stone slab in front of him is his sarcophagus. Engraved in runes. Um, how many of you know Elvin? Uh, yes. Um, okay. How much Elvin are you meaning? Written Elvin. I definitely do. I know it. Yes. And then also, how many of you know Corvin? I do. I do. Um, okay, if you know Elvin or Dwarven, the runes on the um on the sarcophagus it's basically the same thing written in both languages or in both sets of runes here lies finithir arlon uh clan gold powder of the northern mountain realm an elf who stood amongst dwarves and was counted as family And then, much smaller at the very foot, it reads, Deep roots are not reached by the frost. What is that again? Deep roots? Deep roots are not reached by the frost. What is that? That saying along the bottom, deep roots are not reached by the frost. That is a um, order of the acorn saying, and actually one of Finithir's favorite sayings. Uh, used to say that the order of the acorn would survive so long as 
at least somebody remained. And much like trees are able to survive harsh winters, especially this far north, the Order of the Acorn shall also survive. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm guessing y'all want some explanation on why I'm Finneth here as well. Yeah. That'd be great. So, as part of the rules laid down by the, um, the Alliance, the Nation's Alliance, the kings can't be involved with the order beyond financial contributions. Both Finithir and I joined the order when we were traveling. We were... We we were members of the same party. Okay. When I became king, I couldn't really aid the order as I once had. So Finithir and I came up with a plan. Um, as elves do change their names upon reaching a new station or becoming you know reaching adulthood they change their names so finithir changed his name to manelli 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 how do you spell that m i n a e l i That's a familiar name. Roll a d20 and add your intelligence. Just Freya or everyone? Just Freya on that one. Uh, that's a 20. Not a natural 20, though. Okay. Um... Yeah. So, because Finithir changed his name, I took on the name Finithir. Uh, Minelli, while an elven noble, was never in a position where he had to leave the order. Yeah, I'm real confused. <laughs> That's the idea. We we kind oh, of did this to to hide my involvement. You are actually standing in the last the the it's basically uh Ice Meat is one of probably the two last bastions of where uh if if things go wrong, the um, the order of the acorn can retreat to something that was very very needed during the Tower Wars. The order of the acorn was being hunted relentlessly to the point of extinction. In fact, you guys probably haven't well. Probably don't know, but even the Harpers were hunted. Them too, almost to extinction. They used to be a pretty widespread network. From the tail, several small networks of, of Harpers were completely destroyed. Hmm. 
How long has well, he been dead? Died towards the end of the Tower Wars. Probably a few weeks before its official end. Maybe about a month. About a hundred years. A little over. Okay. So I was pretty young when he died. You would... You, yeah, you would have been... Very wee. Very mini. <laughs> Do you have contact with any of his family? Ah, every once in a while. I mean, well, we're old party members, aren't we? We still talk. What about his wife? Yeah, actually, just talked to her a few years back. Do you know where she is? Not since then. She said she was looking for something. I think she went north. Not entirely sure on that one. I figured she would re eventually return back to the back to her home. Haven't heard from her in a few years either. It's been a while. I hear uh, hear a lot for a um, lot more from Ibrariel and uh, Giles anymore. And wolf. Yeah. wolf comes up all the time. Good old wolf. Yeah. Good old boy. Well, he's a prime example. I should be careful what you wish for. He got exactly what he wanted. Except a little bit more than what he wanted, I think. I guess I should tell you all that uh, Manelli is my uncle. He married my aunt. And now I know where he is laid to rest. I didn't know he died. Yeah. Uh, he actually... He actually fought off an Amadore assassin. Died in front of me and Lady Tatiana. Tatiana. Tatiani. Oh yeah, my aunt. My aunt. My, my aunt. That's her. Yeah. Okay. Well. Thank you for bringing me here. No problem. Sometimes it's good to meet family. So, what brings you here? This is a safe place. Nobody really comes here except my daughter occasionally. So, we've got some time. Well. Um. We came to find Timothy here, and now we found him. <laughs> the two of you, I guess. <laughs> yes. Um. We've been actually been running into assassins and they know our faces. Do you know of any reason why that would be? I mean, have you pissed anybody off? Plots. Every once in a while. Yeah, you could say that. I mean, that would probably be a good start. Freya, I could yeah. understand being under the eyes of an assassin. The rest of you, though, that's odd. Yeah, they know all of us. We didn't really end up getting targeted by assassins until after the card joined the order. True. That does not bode well. Or anybody. That suggests... Why is that? Well, that suggests Clan Am Amadori was not destroyed. We thought. 
That's what ended the Tower Wars. Without Clan Amadore pulling the strings behind, behind the scenes, the war essentially fell apart. The Nation's Alliance, or the King's Alliance, that was... That, that came out of the... Uh, that came out of the, the Cataclysm was stronger than ever afterwards. We were able to finish... Finish all of the forces from the south off. So where would the stronghold be? Well, they're not, can't be in the south anymore. Do you think that the order has been betrayed by somebody in it? That's always possible, but uh, the Order of the Acorn has been taking after the uh, has been taking after the Harpers as far as secrecy is involved. You you typically won't know a Harper unless they tell you that they're a Harper. And most even Harper agents only know a short chain of command. They don't know every agent. Obviously, they have ways to recognize each other in case they run into each other in the wild, but... Like your your brooch and your cloak would be the only way. But the brooch alone is not uncommon. It's the cloak with it that makes the... Uh, that makes the connection. So, but where, where did you join the order? I don't remember. Some other dwarf. I believe it was. No Sometime Matt's before we did it. Idris. Uh, in and and I think is where we first heard of the order. And then before we went to Stanagal. Oh no! Yeah, Idris and Vandalion. Idris? Ah, the Elven Lass. Well, she's been uh, helping the Order. So you, you became, you joined the Order in the Elven Land. And the Moon Vale. How could you yeah. forget Idris? The Moon Vale has been one of the more secure I'll places. I'll move on fast. I... He had a little thing for the barmaid. Careful Define with Idris. She's a little bit thing. more than just a barmaid. She could... She could actually probably hold her own against the king. Was it Thelonious? Was that the man? Baby door. Thel Thelonious? Uh, from yeah. Senegal? Potentially. He is the... Elf under the metery. Ah, yes. That's, that's my the nose. Hey. Clever elves would not have uh, would not have pegged a metery, but uh, very ingenious way of spreading out once more. Um, so you went metery hopping, huh? And you joined the order. The yeah. elves typically don't. A, a normal elf, an average elf, wouldn't peg you as the or as a person of the order and share that information. The elves who know about the order know to be quiet about it. 
So the betrayal was definitely not from the Elven Nation. Or at least not from, unless we're being betrayed from within, but there must be something more to that than. Uh, Wait a second. You guys have been hanging out with the Brario. Yes. What hair yes. brain scheme has she been sending you on? That's a great question. All over this damn place. Indeed. Well. This may not be a place, and these words do not leave this room. But you know Ibrariel is a harper, right? <clears throat> yeah, I believe we do. She works in the harpy's roost. Right. It's not a little stretch there. It's a play on words. Um, she's a harper. She's actually the high harper. Um... Of area. But she, she isn't she. She's a friend of you and a friend of Manelli yes. and. Oh, she's of my aunt. Yeah, and oh, my yeah. mom. She was one of child. our party mates. She's she's a, being a Harper is not a bad thing. Being a Harper is an awesome thing. I'm glad she's doing what she's doing. Why'd you make it sound like it was bad then? That's probably it's why it. somebody's hunting you. If you because get betrayed we're... by the order, they would only be hunting you, the car. And if if you had been betrayed, Freya, then they would only be hunting you. So out of everybody involved, if they are hunting all of you, if they have all of your faces, it's because of one of your quests from Ibrariel. Because we live under her roof? That wouldn't be enough to do it. There's been many adventurers who've lived under her roof who haven't been found. So, something she sent us on, then. Or something you've done whilst you were under her roof. Which I guess is pretty Probably much anything. Probably some sort of dark magic regarding uh, Anwen slash Enen. Really? Tell me more about this dark magic. Uh, we met a Wyron who Anwen had been, uh, a shell of what it formerly was, and we met the Wyron of that area, and, uh, he was chained by dark magic, and we also fought... Well, yeah, and we we released him, and then they renamed the whole city. Ah, yes. And then I should have figured it. That's Oracord's daughter's nickname, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This the oh. Alvin King is a fan of ironies and making pointed edicts. Of course you need like that. Did you ever meet the king? He's an okay guy. Not my favorite. So there's a war. I... First of all, Finithir was a brother to me. Second of all, Tatiana may as well be my sister. I've offered her kinship in the clan, but she said her position with the Elven Royal House may not allow her to accept it. But she also, we've also have a way to expand this whole indig for her as well. I will take any elf from the kingdom of the uh, of the northern realm over any Moonvale elf. With some exceptions, I guess. Brariel is a Moonvale elf. Hmm. 
What about a wood elf? Are you from Moonville? Not necessarily. You're fine. Yes! So what do you know about, uh, the gnolls going into the forest? We did some work for Oracord. Gnolls? Were... They're normally a bit further in the mountains. Gnolls was not a surprise. They are very opportunistic, and of course they would be. The question is, they, but the only thing is, they would only move in if there was something there for them. They don't value materialistic things, they only seek to eat. They constantly hunger. If gnolls moved in to NN, that suggests that there was something in NN for them to eat. Something, something that drew them to NN. Sounds like we've got a big old mystery on our hands. Yeah. Yeah, just... When you freed this Wyron, did it offer you anything? Yeah, it offered us anything, anything we could imagine, except for everything. That we asked for. Well, that was a well, bit of a, uh, interesting. It's probably for the best. Do you want to see what happens yeah. when you ask a, a Wyron for anything? Go ask Wolf how that turned out for him. You lose your sanity? Ah, uh, he's still sane. He just gets more wolfy some days. Oh, oh good. Well, oh, he's a werewolf. Well, when the moon hits your eye and there's fur on your thigh, you're a werewolf. Actually, I think he has a little bit of con he has more control over it than that. It's more a shape changer than a werewolf. Yeah, tomato, tomato. It's closer. It's Where is more he? akin to the uh, the druid shape changer or wild shapes ability than. Being a werewolf. He has way more control over it now. Where's Wolf? Yeah, where is he? Uh, he should be back in area. Or running errands for Abrariel. Right. Okay. He is actually due here. He normally comes up north for the winter. He, he likes to fight the yetis the uh, do we have to stay in this, uh, tomb? Oh, no, we or... can. You want to go to dinner? Yeah. Sure. Kind of getting hungry. We cook some, some great meals. Plus, you can meet the family. Well, <laughs> we've already met the family, but you can meet the family. And so he leads you guys out. You guys proceed out of the sepulcher. I guess this would be a sepulcher. And I, um... Would like to use one of my cantrips okay. before we leave. Sure. And uh, I guess uh, the minor illusion. I want to place a flower on top of the sarcophagus of the illusion, but. Oh, easily enough. You flick your wrist and a flower appears on the sarcophagus. Okay. I'm done. We can go now. Anyways, to the wife. She knows about all this, but... The... My daughter doesn't. Don't... No sense telling her anything yet. And the rest of the clan leaders don't know anything. And it's best to keep it that way. So everything that was talked about in there stays in there. Okay, okay then. You got it, Fenny boy. Queen only. You got a stupid nickname for everyone, don't you? That I do, silly. That's okay. Worst case scenario, we'll just hang him from the top of the tallest tower. 
I like that idea. Uh, of course you would. <laughs> and okay, so he leads you guys back out. Okay, deal is going in. <clears throat> and um you guys go into a mess hall, there's this huge feast prepared. Like huge. Um he points you guys at the table under the high table and says those are the those are, that is the table for the captains. He just points out the dwarf hierarchy, like you know, the normal common tables, like the noble tables. And then he points at the high table and he says, You guys will be joining me on the high table. <coughs> Okay. Excellent. And there is delicious foods. And, uh. Speaking of foods. Yes. Can I break, go get foods? Yes, that is what I was leading into. Oh, okay. yeah. Perfect point. Let's take a quick break. And, uh, We're only going for like another 30 minutes, right, Blue? Yeah, pretty much. We'll still take a quick break. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. We'll take a quick break. And we'll be right back. Mainly because I want to play the new video again. <laughs> da, da, da. So, please enjoy the brand new uh tales of Valand video and we'll see you guys in about five ten minutes okay
I did actually Whoa. see a video where there was a guy. He goes into the bathroom like he has to pee. Quick rolls of dice, it's a nat one. You see him walk out and there's just like all wet down his pant leg. And I'm like, man, I should send this to everyone in the group. That is just so That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, so... Roll for Perception, by the way, guys, is now on a mug in my yes. merch store, which isn't linked anywhere, but is yeah. teespring.com slash store slash code blur 13. Why do you not have a command for that? Because I got, I... It's a, it's a problem for future blue. I will add it right now. Teespring.org what? Uh, Teespring.com slash stores slash code blue 13. I, I regret. I have regrets. You looked at it? I was trying to find it on YouTube and I have regrets. What? Oh, the perception thing. Oh, I do have it. It is a command. Hashtag sell out. Exclamation merch. I should add it to exclamation sell out. Like they all instantly are like <laughs> typing it out. It's funny. <laughs> what if that became my work mug? <laughs> Sounds like a problem for future me. <laughs> um, if you left it ambiguous and let everyone think that you meant the rule for perception mug. That's what I thought. You caught here and I have a shower beer bot. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, sellout already exists. Can you edit the uh, text that's on those cups? Um, some of them. You have one too many, um, periods after the end of perception. Oh, no, that was intentional. Why? Because I wanted an ellipses plus one. That drives me bananas. I know it was. I'll fix it. I'll do another one that is more ellipses y. Ellips. Ellipsis? Elliptical. Elliptical. I think perception should be bigger. From uh, other locations in the Twitchverse. So. Mm -hmm. What is sellout currently? Oh, actually, that's perfect. Wow. We're going to just leave that as is. Damn, past me was looking out for future me. Look at that. <laughs> guitar, thank you for the follow. I'm assuming that's guitar. Uh, Guler. Guler. I apologize. That is not guitar. Guler, thank you for the follow. This is what I get for trying to read things um so we, we should say g 11 r yeah g 11 r r yeah yeah the the one time past blue didn't fuck over future blue the one time it was bound to happen at some point that one time yeah it was about past blue was bound to look out for future blue at least once and it was it's probably going to be the only time ever. I still remember hearing a story about how some guy got blackout drunk and then woke up the next morning and was like, "Wow, I see a bo or a glass of liquid uh in the nightstand next to me. Past me is so nice cuz it looks like water and takes a drink. It was vodka. Past me is a dick." That's usually how these things go. Seen that. Um, Alright, so you guys enjoy a mighty feast. After which, you all gain... You all feel refreshed. You lose one... Um, you lose one... Um, exhaustion, if you have any points of exhaustion. And you gain a total of... Um, you guys have five temporary hit points. That's your total. 
next 24 hours. <coughs> and you have immunity to fear and mind stuff. Or resistant. Advantage in saving throws against fear and mind stuff. Hold on, let me double check this. Try to give you guys a hero's feast. Uh, I also have fate ancestry, so wait, no, that that's different. Never mind. Ignore me, like <laughs> usual. Let me make sure I told you guys the right things. Fuck. If it will ever load. Um. Yeah, you guys are cured of any diseases and poisons that you have. You're immune to poison and being frightened. And you have wisdom saving throws with advantage. So, are we, like, healed of all of our hit points and we have five temporary? Uh, you gain five temporary and you also gain five hit points. The temporary hit points will only last for 24 hours. The five hit points that you've healed last for however long. Okay, so we can only get as many as we. You can only have one hero's feast active at a time, but yeah, you gain hit points equal to the name, the number of your hit point maximum increase. It's a temporary increase. <clears throat> temporary hit points. Use right. them first in case of any um badness. Uh. Lof Grimar introduces you to his wife, Queen Hygeia. Hygeia? H Y G E A. Hygeia. Apologizes for her a brusque meeting earlier. Um, and the both of them invite you to come check out the. Um, the Tower Overlook. Or Ice Meat. Which is an insanely tall tower that is built into the mountain. That you want to hang me from? Only if you deserve it. Truth. So, muted, you guys go. Do you, you guys accept this invitation? And also wonder to go to said tower. She told me I was muted. Oh, you guys go up the tower. So it's pretty much the entire tower is contained within the mountain until you reach the very like the um the upper echelon, and. Normally, this would be a very, very, very arduous journey up hundreds and hundreds, possibly thousands of steps. And instead, there is a nifty little magical elevator that is powered by dwarves running a crank. So. Oh, yes, the most magical. Yes, the most magical. It's dwarves and a crank and a pulley system. So you guys get on and you are it's like a set it's like actually a couple different ones that are um set in a pattern. And you guys kind of go up and up and up and up and up and uh finally you make it to the top and when you emerge on the top, the first thing you're met with is the biting cold. As you are, you are now on top of this tower, you expose the elements. And you go outside, and you are within the cloud. You are inside a cloud, and you can see snow blowing past you. Your visibility is literally just the tower. 
Um, most of the snow is not piling up on the tower itself, but, like, somehow magically just swirling around it. Um, once the king and queen follow you guys up to the top of the tower, you instantly feel the wind kind of stop, and it's almost like you guys are encased in a bubble at the top of the tower. Taste in a bubble. Yeah, like a protective bubble. Like, like, um, so the winds don't get you, the air warms up nicely, um, it's no longer as bitter cold, and, uh, <clears throat> Lofgrimar says, a bit of a nightcap before bed tonight, pulls out a bottle of very fine alcohols and Pours glasses, distributes them around. Welcome to the top of the world. This is normally where we can look and see out across the ice plains and down into the moon veil and further still. And it's a little bit stormy today. Hopefully this storm doesn't last too much longer. You guys might be snowed in. Might have to find something for you guys to do. Good thing too, we're opening up some new tunnels in the mines. You guys want to watch some dwarven progress clear clearing things out? How long do these storms typically last here? They can last anywhere from two hours to two weeks. Well, um, Queen Hygia, um, downs her drink and turns to you guys. Well, you're welcome to make yourselves at home for as long as you're here. Your rooms should be ready for you. Hot baths for those of you who want to bathe in hotness. Uh, drawn straight from the volcanic hot springs that heat this mountain. Is there anything you guys needed? Is there any questions you guys had that arose over the course of dinner? Now that you've digested the information my dear husband has given you, as well as your food. When did he bring you in on this? Say again? When did he bring you in on all of his adventuring? and the knowledge thereof. Ah, shortly before we were married. Was that a big surprise for you, or you're like, meh, he's just kind of heroic sometimes? No, it's about right. He does dumb things all the time. Wow, that sounds familiar. It's not nice to point fingers. I can name fingers and point names if you want. It is tragically heroic, however, he does he does good work so. for what he does. Say again, Freya? His tiny little arms. Yes. His tiny little fins. Um, he does do good things, at least. And... Some good came out of a noble elf's death. Well, a half dwarf, half elf, perhaps I should call him. He looks at you, Freya. Benithir was good people. He was very welcome in these halls, and I was proud to have him amongst my friends. Same with Tatiana. Same with Ibrariel. Not too much of a fan of magic. But Giles isn't too bad. He's much more sane than the rest of those tower types. He at least had the sense to put an end to things. 
Yeah, we get along well with him. <laughs> he is quite the character. He does not hesitate to speak his mind, even when a bit of tact would solve the issue perhaps easier. She looks at Lofgrimmar. She, like, stares pointedly at Lofgrimmar, who is looking anywhere but at his wife. Very carefully. Expecting, like, a little nick in the glass, like, you know. But don't feel... All of you are welcome to the family. If you're friends of Freya, you're friends of ours. You guys seem like a decent loss. lot. Plus, Vicar, you've joined the Order. So, yes. you will be learning a lot, I think, in your time here. You may get to learn about some of the Harper connections, finally. And learn why... Uh, learn the history behind the Amadores. Or at least what we've managed to discover. I've I sent out a couple dwarven parties to uh scouts. Just see what we can figure out about their location and whereabouts. See if we can get a base of operation. Uh Hopefully we get something good back. But the least we can do is entertain you while you are here. And like husband says, you can always go down into the mines and watch or help a bunch of dwarves clear the, uh, the new mines. You guys might be cut out for something a little bit more fun than that, though. Once the storm breaks, maybe we'll go to rally as far as smashing mm -hmm. stuff. What? Can you guys love entertainment? It's been a lot of travel and battle and whatever else. Well, maybe some downtime is exactly what you need. Maybe. Perhaps we can. You guys can get some rest and. And uh, we can figure out what your next plan of action is then. Uh, we've got a message from Abrariel. Uh, while while you were with husband, she said to let her know what you need, and she will take care of everything. In the morning, we'll show you how we communicate. It's much faster than sending messages. Much safer, too, for the most part. But so, uh... If you're all good, we'll just take you to your quarters, and, uh... See you in the morning. Yeah, probably should get rest. Alrighty. So you guys are taken down... Um, each of you gets, uh, well, all of you are put in a suite, which has a room for each of you, and a couple bathrooms in it, and flowing hot water that you can pour into the bath. It's very nice. You guys are free to take your, do what you wish. And, um... I think that is where we will end today's session. This feels like a very tidy ending point. Um, roll for perception. Roll for perception. Is that a wee cat? Is that a wee evil cat? Mm -hmm. Look, it's an evil Push cat. Two for perception. You rolled a two. <laughs> I rolled a three. What's the modifier? Is that like nature or something? Uh, I think that'd uh, be dexterity. Oh, I'm nice. gonna say for dexterity for me, that's pretty high. Slide, slide of appendage. So yeah, actually, me, that's be... true. Slide of hand. So yeah, that'd be dexterity. Yeah. So then that'd be a ten for me. 
appendage, uh, it would be a nine for me. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad, all things. Yeah, I've actually heard, I mentioned that I uh, failed a piss check once and asked my brother-in-law who also does DMing and he's like, yeah, I would probably call that a nature check. I mean, think about it. Nature's uh, calling, right? Yeah. Well, I was thinking more of like dexterity to not be in the way of your own urine. This is true. The ability to position yourself well. I probably ended up getting some on the seat. You ended up getting a lot on the seat. Called out! Um, anyways. Thank you guys for watching. Uh... Goo11R. R. Gilar? Yes? Um... I said Guler. Guler. Guler, but with a G. Okay, Guler. I'm gonna forget that. I apologize in advance. Thank you for the follow. Um... I appreciate you a whole fuck ton. Um, thank you guys for the hosts that I can no longer see because my microphone is in the way and now it's in the way of the camera. Um, you guys for the hosts and everything else. Thank you guys for being here watching. Um, did you guys know we have a new cool intro, outro, and BR? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> Look, it's a great video that I spent a little bit of time working on. And it's been a long time in the works, so it's really exciting. Um, thank you all for watching. We will be back next week uh, with more fun and more adventures in the Dwarven Stronghold of Ice Meat. Ice Meat, what a name. Yes, very creative. If I uh, ever forget the name, I'm just going to call it Refrigerator. It does get... Very chilly. Man, I should have I should have seriously watched that um particular Batman movie that, that and used all the catchphrases from it. No! Um, no! So thank you guys for watching. I will catch you all later. Um Good night guys. Oh my. Hey.